concept of a function is one of the most important things that students will learn in their time in algebra. We'll begin our exploration with this problem. Draw a graph and make a table of values of the position of a soccer ball from the time it's kicked off the ground until its first bounce. Make a similar graph and table for the height of the tide above sea level over a period of 24 hours. Compare and contrast your results and with guidance identify the features of a function. They won't know this word function, that'll be up to the teacher to introduce that, that's what we're doing here. Um, but hopefully they'll be able to identify as they compare and, and contrast their, their pictures, they'll identify what it is that, that makes these ideas functions. So our strategy is going to be to use tables of values and, and graphs. And presumably the students will begin with the soccer ball by drawing a, a, a graph, a curve of some sort. Um, I've drawn a very per, uh, stylized curve that's very precise and exact to see better the uh, symmetry of this. Students may not draw a perfectly symmetric uh, pattern and, and in fact in real life a, a soccer ball does not do this. It, it would maybe go up faster and then come down more slowly depending on wind and spin and other things. But basically the idea is that the, the ball is going to start at 0, 0. I have 0 uh, I have the horizontal axis as time, the seconds after the kick, and the height is meters above ground level. So it starts at 0 height, at 0 time, and then it goes up to some maximum and comes back down. And that's the general pattern that you're needing, you want to look for. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I've done that uh, to make my table of values more easy to, to see and create. And so again, you see in the table of values the symmetry 0, 5, 8 up to the max and 8, 5, 0 down. So that's that's one way to do that. And again, we're not looking for uh, real specifics here, just approximate and, and correct idea that the ball is going up and down. And this pattern is not linear. Um, that's one of the key things. They've been working with linear functions a lot, but this is not a linear function or pattern. Uh, the second idea that we'll work with is tides and for some students they may not be familiar with tides um, especially if they don't live near sea level or near near uh, an ocean or a, a large body of water so in that case you can use a different example uh, the position of an accelerating car for example or something that's speeding up faster and faster as time goes on or slowing down um, those kinds of things. Just make, be sure that your example does not create a line that will help them see that these ideas are not limited to linear patterns which they've been familiar with. Anyway, here's what a tide looks like over 24 hours. There are two cycles of a tide and this is a stylized again. Uh, it's actually a sine wave but it's kind of a stylized picture of what tide does. It reaches a high goes down to zero, goes down below sea level usually, and then up and down again with a 12-hour period. And if we make a table, we will see something like this. Again, uh, I've created kind of a stylized version of it that's precise to make things clearer. This same table, you might point out, could also be uh, a points on a different pattern. The pattern could go straight up here and then turn around in a corner and come down to here, for example. Like a sawtooth pattern would also potentially fit this. So we're not looking for uniqueness here. We're just kind of trying to get the students to create a nonlinear pattern. So what, what kinds of observations do we want to make here and want to, want to fish for from our students? Well, there's there's a lot of things that, that may show up. They First of all, they're both uh, dependent on time. They both have to do with time and, and some physical object. They both have increasing portions where they go up and they come back down. They each have a maximum value and in this case a minimum value. This minimum value on the soccer ball is dictated by the, the earth where the ball lands. It can't be negative. This one can't be negative, whereas this one can. Um, so there are an, 